let's take it into a sort of a fun realm, a life in the day of, it, of an editor. Sure. Uh, an editor receives a stack of papers in the mail, um, a, and it, it's going to vary from journal to journal how many papers they receive per day, and, and, and maybe you can just sort of take us through what is the triage process? What does the editor, the managing editor, have to do with the mail that comes in that day of all the manuscripts that are coming forward? What is the process? They're first just trying to see, okay, what do we have? What do we have to deal with? So do we have 100 manuscripts, 10 manuscripts? So that's going to make a big difference in how things are treated. Uh, in general, uh, they're going to take quick looks. Somebody's going to be taking a quick look to see, okay, is this about um, uh, mollusks, and we publish this is a zebra journal, and therefore it's just not of interest to our readers. And so they're going to take those out of the flow right away, and they'll be sent back to the author. Uh, not in the scope of the journal. Not in the scope of the journal. Uh, and, and that can get down to the final level, where sometimes an, an, an author may disagree and say, well, I really think it is. And, and that, that that's a fair comment, and one can, one can argue that. But that's where... It's up to the author to make sure that the editor sees the potential in that cover letter, in the abstract, in the title. Is there? Why would it? Why should it be of interest to him and him or her in his or her journal? Why would they like to see this? Mm -hmm. manuscript? So, so after the initial triage of the uh, of the papers that simply don't belong, right? Uh, what are the next decision points? Then somebody will uh, will decide. Okay, uh, you, most journals have. Um, associate editors or members of an editorial board that are in various sub-sub-disciplines, uh, specialty disciplines, and uh, the editor himself or herself usually isn't an expert in all, those, all these areas, so they'll, they'll try to make a decision on which area it roughly fits into, and then send it to that, uh, that associate editor or board member to say, okay, I think this is in your area. If it is, can you suggest referees? Can you first say, is this worth... Uh, is it worth it for us to read this and to send it out for review? And so there may be a second level of the triaging, if you will, at that at that point. Uh, I view it as part of the same process, um, where that uh, associate editor or specialty editor looks at the manuscript, maybe does a quick read, quick look through, and says, "Okay, is it is this in reasonable shape that I want to uh, have a referee?" Uh, Look at it, or is do, do I not want to waste their time? Is it not in good enough shape? If it's got too many problems that we can see right off the bat, then I'm not going to bother them. So assume that it makes it past that point, then that then that associate or uh, uh, board member is going to uh, select some referees, or with some help in the office, select some referees, some reviewers that look at the manuscript. Mm -hmm. And those reviewers, those referees, are making the decision. They're they're looking at the manuscript. They're providing input and uh, saying, "Is this relevant? Should this be published? Published? Do we think this is interesting? Um, is it something that's not uh, that we've seen too much of lately, or does it have a new twist on maybe an old idea or or, or uh, 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 rebuttal of an old idea that we all, all have all sort of accepted as truth, but." We always wondered about it. This is a nice new, new element to it. Uh, okay. So, uh, as an editor picks up these papers, we've mentioned we talk about the cover letter, the the title, and the abstract. Um, in the triage process, what is the next jump of what part of the paper do you believe is most important to be best well structured in argument, so that whoever is doing the selection process gets a feel for the quality of the paper? Because the title and the abstract are, are very superficial things. Sure. And that I would assume the next step that they go to is, okay, is this paper of quality? And so what types of things do they look for as um, uh, pro proxies or indicators yeah. for that this, without reading the paper, sure. that this is potentially a quality paper? They're going to they're gonna try to get a rough idea of what was done in the materials and method. That may, be that may not be reading it in detail, mm -hmm. but scanning it. They'll be looking at tables and figures to see what kinds of things, uh, what kinds of uh, data, what kinds of uh, output is there. And they'll be looking at the arguments made in the, in the discussion. Is there any argument or is it, is it purely descriptive? Um, is there some summary or, or some way of reasoning that looks like we're going to get through things? Uh, does it look like it's in a nice 
uh, form outline that logically goes through what the authors did, what they uh, wanted to find out, what they were looking for from the introduction, uh, in the methods. Is it all clear? Can somebody else uh, do it again? Do we understand what they were doing? Um, and uh, what did they find out?